Hey there, my name is Matter Wellens, or Matter or Wellens, whatever you prefer. Welcome to Love is Strange. This is a fan-made visual novel of Life is Strange, and we're going to be taking a look at the demo today. So if you're not familiar with the visual novel genre, in a nutshell, it's like reading a book, but there's the occasional picture inside. So really, this is just going to be me doing a lot of reading. And as the title suggests, this is more of a dating sim type of story with the Life is Strange cast. So probably don't be expecting any sort of intricate time traveling plots or anything like that. And actually, this is set in an alternate universe where Max doesn't have any powers and Rachel is still alive. So think more like a slice of life romance story. So if you feel destroyed after episode 5, this is probably the perfect thing to make you feel better. This demo contains the preview for the Chloe route, and according to the creators, there's four potential love interests planned. Chloe, Rachel, Kate, and Victoria. So yeah, bring on the gay, right? <laughs> Anyways, the game is actually free, so if you'd like to experience it for yourself, do feel free to head over to the Tumblr and download it. And it's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. But without further ado, let's begin. Oh, this is a tutorial. Alright. Hello, I'm Hot Dog, your garden teacher. No, I'm not gonna do that voice. <laughs> Love is Strange is a visual novel, meaning you'll be reading most of the time. Every now and then, you can pick dialogue choices that change the flow of conversation or even bring you to different locations. Got it? No. Well, I mean, you just chose no, so I think you got it. Let's go to the classroom. Your dialogue choices can affect the way the other characters in the game interact with you. Characters in the game have approval points, which you earn or lose from the decisions you choose. You will not see these point changes visually, so pick wisely. Depending on the approval points you have with a character, it will influence how they talk to you. Also, you can use the back button on the quick menu to go back and read things. Ah, yeah, there you go. Okay. The quick menu is located to the bottom right. This stuff here. However, if you go back to a decision, you can't undo that decision. So in that case, we would have to save before we make a choice then. There's no time travel magic here. Once your decisions are made, they are made permanent. That sounds stupid, hot dog. Don't be so negative. Do make sure to save your game every now and then. The game won't remember your decisions if you don't save. But depending on your decisions, you'll see different dialogue from characters, get different dialogue options, even get different endings. Because remember, your actions have consequences. Oh, good luck. All right. Wow, I did not expect to see Jefferson hot dog there. That was disturbing. <laughs> really. Let's see how this is going to be. Okay, day one introduces Max to a photo contest at Blackwell Academy. Max can choose who she partners with for the photo contest. For demo purposes, we've chosen Chloe as Max's partner. This is day two, Chloe's route. Oh, okay, so you see how that's happening? So in the real game, when the real thing comes out, probably we can choose to partner with Kate or Victoria or even Rachel Amber. The breakfast rush at the Two Wells Diner always takes me by surprise, even though I've been coming here since I was a kid. The atmosphere is always electric, the frantic energy of the bustling staff. The impatient hungry truckers perched at the lunch counter like hulking, churlish birds on a wire. The sleepy locals slumped in their booths over steaming mugs of coffee. I've been here nursing my own coffee for 10 minutes now. This morning, I woke up to a text Chloe sent at 2am asking me to meet her at the diner at 8 sharp for breakfast. She's late, of course. I should probably be more annoyed than this, but I'm kind of used to it. Chloe tries, but she's never been able to keep to a schedule. It's kind of a miracle she manages to make it to her classes on time, most days. I suppose this means I should be more worried about asking Chloe of all people to help me with my entry for the photo contest. But Chloe's never let me down when I've needed her. Not ever. And she's not starting today. I can't stop the smile that spreads across my face when Chloe enters the diner. She scans the room, panting a little, looking disheveled. When her eyes light on mine, her face breaks out into a grin of its own and she makes a beeline toward our booth. Hey, sorry I'm late! 
she slides into the booth with effortless cool, shooting me her most charming apologetic smile. You mad? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm not mad. No, I'm, I'm a little bit mad. <laughs> Jokingly. I lean back in the booth, fixing Chloe with an exasperated look. Are you kidding? Chloe, you weren't even on time for your own birth. I knew what I was getting into. A flicker of annoyance flashes across Chloe's face, but she pushes it back. Uh-oh, I think we pissed her off already. <laughs> she shrugs carelessly, reaching across the table to steal the mug out of my grip and take a gulp of coffee. You and Joyce need to stop sharing baby Chloe stories. It's weird. I roll my eyes and make a half-hearted grab to take the mug back. Chloe's determined though, leaning back out of my reach and draining the rest of the coffee in one long gulp. She shudders, slamming the mug down on the table like a shot glass. Ugh. Gross. Chloe just grins in response, looking entirely too pleased with herself. Are you hungry? God, yes. Chloe cranes her neck dramatically, looking around the diner. Where's Joyce anyway? I'm gonna die of starvation before she even takes my order. Then she'll be childless and you'll be partnerless and my sad, hungry ghost will forever be bound to the two whales. Cursed to haunt the greasy truckers and painfully slow waitstaff for eternity. Not so fast, Casper. Chloe snorts. I kick her lightly beneath the table and continue despite the interruption. Joyce should be out with her food in a minute. It's like flipping a switch. Chloe's face lights up, the previous conversation immediately stricken from her memory. She leans forward, seizing my hands in hers and dragging them across the table. Oh my god. <laughs> Max? You've been my best friend since we were kids. My first mate, my partner in crime. And now, the girl who buys me breakfast. I'm ready to take the next step. Max, will you do me the great honor of marrying me and buying me food for the rest of our lives? <laughs> She's been doing this more and more lately. Saying things that could just be joking, but could also be, well, flirting. I just can't figure out if Chloe's being deliberately confusing or I'm such a colossal social dunce that I can't tell the difference. Chloe waggles her eyebrows, squeezing my hands playfully. Max? <laughs> I laugh awkwardly, feeling a blush rise on my face and yank my hands out of her grip. Who said I'm buying? Chloe pouts, bottom lip jutting out dramatically. You know, I did just offer to spend the rest of my life with you. The least you could do is offer to pay for my... Wait, what did you get me? Oh, well, no, no, what is she like? Do we know what Chloe likes? Ah, uh, let's get her some... Let's get her some meat, eggs, and bacon. Your favorite, bacon, side of eggs. Chloe slams her palms down on the table excitedly. Hot damn, now we're talking! Joyce bustles out of the kitchen a few minutes later, expertly balancing trays loaded with breakfast foods. Chloe smirks mischievously, leaning forward in the booth. No doubt with something cheerfully antagonistic on the tip of her tongue. But the morning rush is so hectic that Joyce barely has the time to set down her plates in front of us before tearing off across the restaurant to attend the family of five that just filled up the last free booth. Chloe looks briefly disappointed that she lost the opportunity to annoy her mother. At least now she remembers there's food in front of her. Chloe eats with a sort of single-minded ferocity not uncommon in wild dogs. She's got about the same level of manners too, I remember. Thinking of all the times she'd stolen food right off my plate and unconsciously hunching over my meal when she looks up and starts eyeing my waffles. This is kind of off topic, but in episode 3 when we stay over at Chloe's house and Joyce serves us breakfast after you leave the table, Chloe actually does steal your food. Just saying, man. You gonna finish that? Da, okay, fine, she can have it. Fine. I roll my eyes, taking one last bite and pushing my plate across the table to her. Chloe perks up, eagerly accepting the extra food. Thanks, Max! 
So, I bet you're feeling... So, I bet you're pretty pumped to get started on your project, huh? I bite my lip, shifting my gaze from Chloe's eager face to the window facing the street. I watch a few cars pass by, trying to gather my thoughts. I guess I'm excited. But... I glance back to Chloe, unable to stop the smile that tugs at the corner of my mouth. She always knows when there's something I'm not saying. But I'm pretty nervous too. I still can't believe I actually volunteered for the contest. I can. Chloe says like it's just a fact. I feel butterflies flutter in my stomach, nervous for a whole nother reason now. Confidence has always seemed to come as easy as breathing to Chloe, and I get it. She's tough and beautiful and smarter than she gives herself credit for. That all makes sense. But it's her unwavering confidence in me that I just can't wrap my head around sometimes. Max, you're like the best photographer in school. I know sometimes you get all in your head about this shit. But it's really not so complicated. Of course you're gonna kill it here. I smile gently back, hearing the hesitance at the end of her sentence. But... Chloe smiles bashfully, cheeks flushing just slightly, looking up at me through a fringe of blue hair, like a kid with her hand in the cookie jar. But it was kind of surprising that you asked me to help you with your project. What? Chloe shifts in her seat. The food is gone now. She has nothing to distract her from the conversation, so she grabs a packet of sugar from the center of the table tearing it open and pouring the contents out into shapes on the tabletop. Joyce is gonna be so pissed. I mean, there are lots of, you know, good photographers in that class, Max. I basically only took photography so I could hang out with you and Rachel at school a few times a week. Mm, so Chloe is still in Blackwell here. She actually goes to school. And you know, she's doing that thing where she's acting distracted by the sugar, but she's actually kind of embarrassed right now. <laughs> Chloe, you're my best friend. There's no one else I'd rather have in my corner for stuff like this. Chloe looks up from the pile of sugar she was carefully shaping into swirls in the center of the table. Best friend. Uh-oh, she's getting hung up. No, man, I love you. Don't, don't, you're not just my best friend. Her tone is light, but the look on her face makes me feel like I didn't say quite the right thing. My first mate. My partner in crime. The girl I buy breakfast for. Chloe's face breaks out in a wide grin, cheeks pink. In that case, can I order another? No. Chloe laughs. Worth a shot. So, guess we better get started on this thing. The rules say you need to take your photo somewhere in Arcadia Bay. You know where you want to go? Probably should have saved before this, huh? Nah, we can let her decide, whatever. Actually, why don't you tell me where you want to go? Chloe had pulled the beanie off her head and tugged it down over my eyes as soon as we got into the truck. I had wanted to pull it off, but she levied the vague threat of swift retribution against me. Remembering all the retaliatory pranks she had unleashed on those who had dared to oppose her in our childhood. I decided to play along. Even with my eyes covered, I had felt the excitement radiating off of her for the entire drive. I can't deny that I'm eager to see what Chloe has in store when the truck finally rolls to a stop. Sit tight! I hear the car door open and close. Then, a moment later, I feel the door on my side open. She leans across my body unbuckling my seatbelt for me and wrapping a hand around my elbow to guide me out of the cabin. I stumble anyway, my clumsiness trumping Chloe's best efforts to help me. She catches my weight against her body, steadying me with one hand on my hip and the other still gripping my arm. Ooh la la. Whoa there. Sorry. I can feel myself blushing, for once grateful that the beanie obscures so much of my face. You okay? Her voice is so close and quiet. The gentle pressure of her fingers against my hip makes my heart beat faster, and I nod dumbly. 
Are you ready? I can hear the excitement in her voice. A fluttery feeling blooms in the pit of my stomach. I'm excited too. Yeah. Chloe yanks the beanie off my head and I squint against the sudden explosion of light. Oh! I look around, taking in the heaps of rusted metal, the scraggly weeds, the towering evergreens looming in the background. It's... Amazing! We're not gonna call it a dump, are you crazy? <laughs> amazing! Wow, Chloe! It's dorky, but I'm actually kind of awestruck by the atmosphere of the place. There's so many things around. Old vehicles, decommissioned signs, busted appliances, everything with its own story, each piece a unique offering. This place is perfect! Chloe beams at me, shoving her hands in her back pockets and rocking back on her heels. You think so? Yeah! God, I could get so many cool shots here. I'm so glad you can see it, you know? The potential here. Chloe trails off, looking thoughtful. After a beat of silence, she turns around, fixing me with a mischievous smirk. Let me show you around. Chloe takes off with another little skip, grabbing the sleeve of my sweater and pulling me behind her. She leads me on a whirlwind tour around the yard. We weave between stacks of rusted out car bodies, pick our way carefully through jagged metal and broken glass, around a field of dented metal drums and old tires and rebar. It doesn't take long for me to start to understand just what Chloe loves so much about this place. There is a sort of serenity here, among all the wrecks and the refuse. It's kind of beautiful. Chloe drags me over to an old trawler and offers to boost me up over the side. I decline. That thing looks like tetanus waiting to happen, but Chloe just shrugs and hauls herself over to the side with a cheerful disregard for her own personal safety. She struts around atop the boat, posing and flexing, mugging for the camera like the charismatic jerk she is when I fall back to snap a few photos. Oh no, it's the dread pirate Bluebeard, here to plunder Arcadia Bay! Ah! Chloe's pirate impression is as hilariously bad as ever, and I can't help but laugh. Chloe rolls her eyes, offended, and casually flips me off. Shut up, landlubber. Don't think I won't make you walk the plank. She walks to the tip of the bow and kicks over a chair, propping a leg up on the upturned seat. Fuck that bluebeard shit. Call me Captain Morgan. I snap another photo, grinning. Captain Morgay? She laughs and hops down without warning tossing me one of the metal curtain rods she had been waving around atop the trawler. What's this? Your sword! On guard! She takes a slow swing at me and I react on instinct, deflecting the blow with my curtain rod and leading us into a full-blown sword fight. She swings again and I react on instinct, deflecting the bolt. Ooh, that's the same line. And suddenly, it's a full-blown sword fight. Oh, looks like this might be a bug. It's showing the same line again. And it's bizarre, because we've done this dozens of times. We're grown-ups now, but somehow playing pirates with my best friend is e still easier than breathing. For as much as she changed, for all the hair dye, and the tattoos, and the weed it smoked, and the occasional bad attitude, there are things about Chloe that are just fundamental. Like, she can still make the dumbest, goofiest shit still seem fun and exciting. Her laugh still makes my heart skip. Her smile still warms me up from the inside. And she still gets way too cocky in a sword fight, leaving herself wide open. I faint to the right, almost feeling bad when she lunges predictably away, defense slipping. Almost. Chloe's eyes widen as my next swing comes down. She knows she's gonna get sent straight to Davy Jones's locker. Frantically, she tries to dodge but ends up tripping over a stack of tires and landing right on her ass. Damn it! She sinks back into the pile of rubber in defeat, breathing heavily. I grin, feeling a trickle of sweat roll down my temple. Hey Chloe, maybe we should stop. You're looking pretty... Max, don't say it. Tired. 
Chloe groans and rolls onto her side. Slowly, she pushes herself up to a standing position, patting down her pockets. I'm not high enough to deal with this right now. Come with me. She leads me around a center block shed, along some train tracks, and back into the junkyard, to a clearing behind the school bus. Chloe hops up onto the hood of an old car, patting the spot next to her and sparking up a joint. The metal is warm from the sun as I take my seat beside her. We're sitting so close, I can feel her pinky brush against mine on the hood of the car. Tentatively, I reach over and hook my finger over hers, watching the slow smile that spills across her face in response. I'm really glad you wanted me to help you, Max. I already told you, there's no one else I'd rather have helping me with this. Chloe speaks through a puff of smoke, looking out towards the trees. I know, not just because of that though. I knew you'd be busy with this project for the rest of the week, and I really wanted to spend time with you. Max, I'm leaving. I feel like all the air has been sucked out of my lungs. What? Chloe winces and takes a hit of the joint to buy herself some time. I need to get out of here. I'm so sick of this town. I'm taking off at the end of the week. I just need to go someplace else for a while. You're leaving? Only for a couple of days. Or weeks. Look, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm coming back, alright? What should I say? I don't I don't want to be like you don't you can't do that because I don't own her or anything, but mm. No, you can't do that. You have to help me with my project. You have to help me, okay? Please. Chloe, what the hell? You can't just leave. Chloe slides down the hood of the car, dragging the smoldering tip of the joint along the metal to stub it out. She spins on the balls of her feet as soon as she hits the ground, leveling a glare at me. I knew I did the bad thing, she's mad at me. <laughs> yeah, Max, I can. I am. She pops her eyebrow like a challenge, mouth twisted into a scowl. My heart catches and I'm so mad for a second. Chloe and I don't fight often, but for good reason. She's the only person who's ever been able to get under my skin quite like this. I open my mouth, ready to argue again. And then, I notice it. Chloe's hands tremble, just barely, when she goes to tuck the unfinished joint into her pocket. I pause, flicking my eyes back up to her face. She's still staring me down, ready to raise hell, but anger was always easier for Chloe than fear. I think about her nervous admission in the diner, the hesitancy in her voice when she told me she was leaving, and I know that my reaction now could break her. Okay, okay, wait. Chloe's face goes slack with surprise before her defenses come back up. She shifts nervously in place, the look she's giving me now still wary, but less certain. What? I take a deep breath and pat the empty space next to me. Get back over here. Come on. She hesitates, gnawing her bottom lip nervously. Chloe, please. Reluctantly, she takes a seat beside me again, propping her heels up on the front bumper and draping her arms across them. I don't want to fight with you, Chloe. So, if you're really leaving, let's not spend our time together that way, okay? Okay. I've never been out of Arcadia Bay, Max. And sometimes it feels like I'll never be able to. And that's... terrifying. I don't expect you to really understand, but I need you to trust that this is what I need right now, okay? It's rare to see Chloe so earnest. I smile despite the lump in my throat, the tightness in my chest. Okay. Chloe slumps forward a little, relieved, and I finally get how tense she was before. This must have been eating her up. 
I reach out and take her hand again, and she perks up a little, shooting me a small but earnest smile. Guess we better get to school, huh? I smile back, squeezing her hand as she slides off the hood of the car and pulls me to my feet. Guess so. Her hand in mine is warm. I hold it for as long as I can. Oh! Alright. Well, well there. Wow, that was really nice. Like, uh, I'm totally one of those trashy shippers that ship everything. <laughs> so, this kind of stuff is kind of right up my alley. And that was really nice, like the little details about how the metal is warm from the sun and her hand being warm when you hold it. Like, the little details really help flesh out the story, especially in a visual novel like this. It seems that if I were to actually romance Chloe, I would have some trouble because I keep making the wrong choices. Probably shouldn't have been arguing there, but... You know, at the same time, I feel like in canon, it's kind of right. It feels kind of right for Max and Chloe to argue a little bit too. Especially with Chloe's explosive personality. But yeah, that was really fun. And I could feel my teenage heart flutter a little bit. <laughs> oh man. Anyways. So this is the Love is Strange demo. The full game is slated to be released in early 2016, so do keep a watch out for that. Once again, this game is free. The very definition of made by fans, for the fans. Passion projects run off of reception by other fans and the general community, so really, if you've enjoyed it, I really encourage you to head over to their Tumblr here and let them know your thoughts. So here's the full list of people who are working to make this game happen. I believe these are all Tumblr links, so if you... Obviously, I can't click on them right now, but... If you would like to visit their Tumblr, this is their URL, and the main Tumblr for the game is loveisstrange-vn.tumblr.com. This was the demo. Let me know if you would like me to look into some of the alternative dialogue. I believe there are some other locations that we could have gone to, but we haven't gone to yet. For example, if I let Max choose where to go, we probably could have gone to somewhere other than the junkyard too. Uh, this was pretty fun, and I'm really looking forward to the full thing. Anyways, yes, remember to go say some nice words to them if you enjoyed this. I'll see y'all soon. Bye!